Hang on. I think. Hello. <gasps> okay, perfect. Okay, Sarah's video diary, May third. I hate running. I mean, I used to love running, but now that we have to do it, I hate it. pull-ups. Why do we have to do pull-ups if we're going to be weightless? I know we have to be fit because space flight weakens bones and muscles. In fact, we'll be working out a lot during our long journey. You don't want to step off a spaceship onto the planet and collapse into an embarrassing heap of space couch potato. But pull-ups? I mean, there isn't even an up in space anyway. Up, up, and away. And then there was scuba diving. Scuba in space? Yeah, I don't think so. But it's supposed to be team building and help us adjust to weightlessness. Underwater can simulate microgravity by neither sinking nor floating. It's called neutral buoyancy. And it's almost like being weightless. But the best training for that was truly being weightless. I mean, go figure. This airplane climbs and dives like a roller coaster, tossing everything and everybody inside into weightlessness for short times. We call it flying parabolas. At the top of each parabola, we experience free fall. Yeah, I puked my guts out. They call it the vomit comet. Training for space flight is hard work. And then there's studying. Endless studying. The latest topic, radiation. In our mission to Mars, we're gonna have to deal with radiation, big time. It sounds scary, doesn't it? I mean, what do most people think of when they hear the word radiation? It looks something like this. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you are not ready, did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. That's what I thought too. I was way wrong. In the form of light and heat from the sun, radiation keeps us alive. We have radiation like x-rays, which you can see inside yourself with. We have radiation like microwaves, which we cook and communicate with. We have radiation like radio waves, which we can use for radios, TVs, cell phones, and other radio communications. If we didn't have radiation, we wouldn't have astronomy, because in astronomy we use all kinds of wavelengths to observe the sky. In fact, everything on Earth and everything everywhere has some level of radiation in it, including us. True? True. We get all kinds of radiation into our bodies through the food we eat and the water we drink. And we get all kinds of radiation from other sources. We get UV light from the sun, we get cosmic radiation from space, and we get radiation from the Earth itself. There is evidence that low doses of radiation may even be good for you. Great. So what's the problem? It can also kill you. Okay, so clearly I need to know more. Radiation is a general term for anything that radiates. 
or moves out from a source. But usually we're talking about two kinds of radiation, particle and electromagnetic. It's pretty simple. Particle radiation is made of really small, really fast moving particles. Electromagnetic radiation is in the form of light waves, visible light, ultraviolet light, infrared, and others. No sweat, particle radiation, electromagnetic radiation. Now, which one can kill you? Either kind of radiation, if it has enough energy and intensity, can be bad. We call that ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation is what you gotta watch out for. Okay, ionizing radiation is radiation that creates ions. And what are ions? Okay, atoms contain positive particles called protons and negative particles called electrons, right? Go on. In most atoms, they're balanced. The electric charge equals zero. But ions are atoms with an electric charge. So if you have more protons than electrons, it creates an overall positive charge. And if you have more electrons than protons, it creates a negative charge or a negative net charge. So ions are electrically charged atoms. I thought that's what I just said. And ionizing radiation, when it hits a normal atom, can turn it into an ion by knocking out one of its electrons. All right, what kinds of ionizing radiation are we talking about? Okay, well remember that both particle and electromagnetic radiation can be ionizing radiation with the right amount of energy. Yes, but what do astronauts have to be worried about? Okay, there's galactic cosmic radiation, radiation trapped around the Earth, and, and... And... Don't tell me, um... Fireworks, explosions. Oh, the sun! Solar particle radiation. Three for three. And tell me why solar particle events are such a big deal? Well, remember what you learned in training. Solar particle radiation are made up of high energy protons that are ejected from the sun. Solar flares are fairly common, but it's the coronal mass ejections which are the big daddies. Now imagine billions of tons of material hurtling through space at millions of miles an hour. The sun is the source of space weather. Weather? In space? Yes, there's weather in space. And when it's bad, you don't want to be caught out in it. So what if we do get caught in it? If I step outside the building during a coronal mass ejection, am I going to get fried or what? No, we're talking about space weather here. The Earth's atmosphere and magnetic fields protect us from most kinds of space weather. Which reminds me, trapped radiation is my favorite. Want to go for another spin? Really, trapped radiation is solar particle radiation. It's just been captured by the Earth's magnetic field. When these particles, the electrons and protons, hit the Earth's atmosphere, they cause the air to glow often resulting in auroras. Like the Northern Lights. Beautiful. Yeah, but that's not the type of radiation I'm most concerned about for our flight. Hey, you missed this piece? Galactic cosmic rays, that's what I'm talking about. You just like the way it sounds. Yeah, galactic cosmic rays, it's fun to say, try it. No. Come on, remember what we learned in training. Galactic cosmic radiation comes from sources outside of the solar system. Well, these include things like supernova and quasars. The kinds of radiations are actually fast moving nuclei that have been fully stripped of their electrons. Remember, we call that ionizing radiation. And they include things like protons and heavier elements like, like iron and uranium. And they're traveling near the speed of light. But what about all that other radiation we mentioned? Cell phones, microwaves, TV. I know it's complicated, but picture this. Now there are two types of radiation, particle and electromagnetic. 
Now, either one of these can be considered ionizing radiation with the right amount of energy. Radiation that creates ions or electrically charged atoms. Exactly. That's why your TV and your cell phone don't kill you. Now, the type of radiation us astronauts have to worry about are galactic cosmic radiation, trapped radiation, and solar particle events. Galactic cosmic radiation, trapped radiation, and solar particle events. Does that mean the northern lights could kill me? No, they're too high up to hurt anybody on the ground, and besides, we do not fly through them when we're in space. What about my video game consoles? No.